Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to the podcast. I am so excited that you're here listening. Today, we are doing another student interview. I am joined today by one of my awesome students, Jen, last name Draper, right? Jen Draper. Okay, cool. As you can tell, I come to these so prepared with the intros. Um, Jen, why don't you tell my audience a little bit more about yourself and, of course, your business? Sure. Um, Hi, everybody. I'm uh, a registered dietitian. I uh, work and live in Hawaii, and I have a virtual private practice. I also teach uh, at the university nutrition courses, um, and I've been in practice for a little over 10 years, and um, yeah, that's... Oh, and I'm also growing my income streams. Something I've, yes. been, I've been learning to entrepreneur, and I've started my own courses and um, some memberships, and I'm working on some new, new streams. Beautiful. Think- we love we love extra revenue streams. Well, tell us a little bit more about your one on one services. Like, what does that? Is it like consultations or like how does that work? What do you do? Mm-hmm. It's I do um, consultations. Most of my practice has been working with eating disorders. Okay. Like, so that's like a pretty intense, like we work together for years kind of thing, once a week, twice a month. I also, I'm branching out more just to like help people who want to be able to eat and feel good in their bodies and um, like work on their health goals. So that, uh, I have packages that I do like a three month or a six month package for people that's pretty, uh, pretty robust. They get our one-on-one time like twice a month and then I do um, other support in between our visits, like uh, meal planning and food journaling and send them little like inspiration videos. Nice. Okay. Awesome. So I want to reflect back to when you joined Unfuck Your Biz. So we were just chatting before we hit record that it was a full year ago, which is kind of wild, right? I, cause yeah. I had to ask you, I didn't remember if you were in the spring 2020 class or the fall 2020 class. And it was, it was spring cause the fall class really just ended like a month ago. So I launched that course or that round of the group program, like the second or third week of COVID lockdown. So it was, I had no idea people would want to participate. It was, we had really at that point, we had no idea what we were in for, but if you reflect back to like March, April, 2020, you were already in business for about 10 years. So what made you decide like now's the time that I'm going to do all this stuff? Yeah. So I, um, I just, as you were talking, Brayden, I remember that I learned about you through, uh, um, entrepreneur symposium for dietitians. And oh, I was okay. like, with so yeah, with Heather. So this is, um, you know, a lot of the material is, is like, familiar to me, but yours really stood out. And I was like, I need to unfuck my biz. What does this mean? Who is this funny guy? This is like, okay. I always had felt um, kind of intimidated to even like look at my tech stuff and it just was overwhelming. So just your, like, you were so funny in the um, module that you did and you gave really great value and uh, like it was a really good resource. So when I got on your list and then I heard about your course, I was like, yes, how soon can I do this? Like I, like if I was ever going to do it, it's with Brayden because I'm going to be okay. And like, I won't cry every time I think about it. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, and having the time during lockdown was like, all right, let's do this. Let's get this course done. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's good to know. I didn't, I didn't know you originally came to me through Heather. So Heather used to be in my business mastermind actually. Oh, okay. Maybe yeah. That's yeah. fun. Well, I'm glad that you thought that I made the material a lot more approachable. That's our goal, right? Because it is scary stuff. So you were you watched my presentation at the summit, and obviously, usually people don't just like. Oh. So there are some people who watch like every presentation when they go to a summit, but a lot of people will kind of cherry pick. And so at the time, what was in the back of your mind that made you think, "Oh, I definitely need this course." I had. Um, I got, I was stuck in that cycle of owing back taxes and then like not being able to keep up with my current taxes. Like I was paying, I was paying, but I was just like in that, um, I think you call it the shit cycle. The oh shit cycle. Yeah. Yeah. I was in the oh shit cycle. I have a podcast episode coming out on that actually a week after this. Yeah. Um, so that, 
that was the main one. I also was still um, a sole prop. And so having the support to uh, register as an LLC was a, another big factor. I was like, oh, someone will show me. I'll, I'll get to do this in a party. And step by step in a, in a LLC filing party. Yeah, like that part um, was another incentive. So it's just like recognizing I needed to step up and I just felt like you reached down and you're like, take my hand, come, come to I the got, party. Yeah. I got yeah. you. Come to the party. All right. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, let's talk a little bit about the oh shit cycle. So this will be a little bit of a primer for everyone for next week's ep episode. Cause in next week's ep episode, I actually talk about my own personal journey on the oh shit cycle, because <laughs> there are not a lot of secrets around here. I tell people, if you hear me talking about a concept, it's usually because I've experienced it first. And then I realize the other people have experienced it. And then we move on from there. So with regard to this, like you weren't multiple years behind on your taxes, were you? You were always just like one year behind? Um, no, I was, it was multiple years because I had like paid parts of, mm -hmm. like I had 3,000 I owed from three years ago, I had 5,000 for, like it was kind of staggered. Yeah. Um, and then I had one year that I hadn't filed. Like okay. I did file 2017 and I was like, I don't even know. I don't know how that happened. You didn't realize you hadn't filed it until you went like went to go look? No, I knew that I hadn't. And then like, I just didn't. And I don't even remember. I filed an extension and then October came and went. Uh huh. And then I just procrastinated. So that was another thing that I worked on. So I was like, okay. So, so I was behind. Um, and the thing happened for me where my, um, I had a jump in my income. So the first time I paid taxes, it was really low. It was like, Fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, and then I, um, I was paying off some credit card debt, so I was like really focused on that, and I didn't have any extra cash. And then here came the next year, and I was like nine thousand dollars. What? Like how? Because I had, because of course I hadn't been saving or praying the um, estimated taxes. Yeah. So then it was just like, now what do I do? Always filing in October just like a mess. And, and every time I would have this like little fantasy that it would just magically get better. Like I'll just make all the money next year and pay everything off at once. Yeah, that's, that's what we do, right? We always tell ourselves, oh, well, at least you're always getting something taken care of, right? So you weren't saving for your quarterly taxes because you were really focused on your credit card debt, but then you pay out the credit card debt and then now the taxes have ballooned. Exactly. But we do, we tend to tell ourselves, we're like, okay, well, you know, February, by February, 2022, I just know that I'm going to be having $10,000 a month and then I'll be able to, you know, pay off $4,000 a month on this. Right. Yeah. But that never happened. Like a, a big reason why that doesn't happen is because we let our business expenses creep up with our income. Yes. So we don't really have that much money left over, but then also we have other expenses and we probably let ourselves get into more credit card debt. And so it's like a back and forth. We're all like the credit card, oh shit cycle. And then the tax oh shit cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, I have done the creeping of the business expenses. Like when I when you talked about that, I was like, oh yeah. Then I added this service, and it was like, this is why I have no money, even though I'm making money. Yeah, because it's all like it's really it's all interconnected, right? Because we think, okay, we really do think like right now we're in Q two of 2021, and I know maybe like I won't get to my goal revenue by the end of this year, but I can do it next year. And in order to do that, I need to invest in these business expenses, right? But then come early next year, we, we kick the can further down the road and we're like, okay, I'm really going to do it like in the middle of this year, but I got to invest in like these few things first, right? Sometimes, Jen, <laughs> it's funny because I was like joking with my mastermind friends the other day. And I was like, maybe I need to stop talking about cash flow so much because I have a lot of people who tell me that they don't buy my programs because then they need to focus on cash flow. That's like a catch 22, right? Of course, I'm not going to tell people, of course, I'm not going to stop teaching this stuff because I want people to buy my stuff. Um, but you do like, hopefully, I hope that people allocate a certain amount of money to buy my program, right? So that I can help them get out of trouble. But if they're going to be watching their finances, they have to be choosy about where they're going to spend their money. Yeah, yeah. And it, part of what um, you do so well, Brayden, is you just instill hope in us. You're like, this is possible. Like, I did it. You can do it. And you also do such a good job of normalizing. I remember, like, one of the risk modules where you're like, 
yeah. So if you haven't even filed some old taxes, and I was like, wait, I'm not the only person. Like, I'm not the worst entrepreneur that, that like that random 2017 taxes. Yeah, we have to cover that first, right? Because it's like you can't get on an installment plan and you, until you file your back tax returns. Right. So I've had students, like I've had students who needed to file four years of tax returns all at once. So that's their first step. They're going to yeah. file like 16, 17, 18, and 19, and then 20, which is like would now be due. And then what they're going to do is they're going to figure out what's your balance after filing all of those. And then you get on a payment plan. Mm -hmm. So Jen, let's talk about your process in the course. So while you, did you do your 2017 tax return while you were in the course? Yes. And how, how was that? Was it easy for you to do? Did you have problems like finding the documentation that you needed? Uh, it was pretty easy because I, I like keep stuff in a file as the year goes on, like anything I need. So I had everything there. It was just sitting down to do it. Really. It was just like getting over my uh, shame of not having done it. Like that, my shame about not doing it was so much yeah. harder, so much bigger. And then I'm just like, oh, just sit down and do it. And yeah. I can't remember when you, when you were in the program, did I already have my tax filing tutorial videos in there? Did you follow those? Do you remember? Um, I didn't follow them. I don't think they were in there. I okay. remember talking about them coming, but yeah, now we have them. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if anyone else needs them, now we have them. And if you need to file this year's tax returns, I have tutorial videos in there. And of course, you still have access to the course, which is magnificent. So you join the program, you got 2017 tax return done. You went through module one, which is all about learning about tax basics and legal basics, which I feel like that module, that's the hardest sell for me to give to people because a lot of people just kind of want to skip it. And it's also the longest one. Yeah. So what was your process going through module one? Were you like, Jesus Christ, this is a lot. Um, no, I don't, I don't have any like negative memories of it. I mean, some of it was, <laughs> I was familiar. Like I'm not remembering like, oh, I hated it. It was just kind of like, oh, I need to, it, some of it was confirming what I knew when I was like, oh, I've been, I did that right. Okay, cool. Like, yeah. okay. That well, you already I checked that one off. Yeah. Um, and what I'm remembering was just understanding how not filing taxes is much worse than filing and not paying yet. Just like the, the um, fees, penalty, yeah. penalties like that. I was like, Ugh. Oh, yeah, you have to file. Yeah. That's what I, one of the things I tell people all the time, you have to file your taxes on time, even if you don't have the money to pay them because the penalty for filing late is like 10 times. I'm not, or check that. It's a lot higher <laughs> than paying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot higher. It's 0. 0.05 versus 0. 0.5. I'd have to do the, that's 10 times, right? I don't know. I'll have to get out my calculator. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a big difference. So yeah, that's really key. So we, we learn about all of that. We get to, we get into the second part of the course and you do your back tax return. Did you, because you just went through Unfuck Your Finance. We'll talk a little bit about that at the end, but I know that you're still working towards some tax debt. Yeah. Did you set up a payment plan while you were in the course? No. Did you do that? Did you do it after? No. <laughs> <laughs> no okay, I Jen, we got to, we got to put that on the top of your to-do list. No, it is. It is. Because I was, um, I felt worried about not being able to keep up with the current, the quarterlies, even though I had a system, I was like not really trusting my, uh, cause I have it set up for capital to, collect the money, but I was like, what about COVID? And what if I don't have business? Yeah, no, I yeah, just that's fair. Because I was, I was, I'm so used to like just only paying one thing and like yeah. holding on the other. So I didn't really trust my system. But now you're, so, but you're saving for your current quarterly taxes. You're just not really paying the back tax that much right now. Right. Yeah. Like okay. just ignored it. Like I just was like, well, it's just out there. Just gotcha. Kidding. All right. So at least, so the way that we can look at this is you've kind of, you've cut off the cycle because you're keeping up with your current taxes. You just have, have to pay the backlog now, which yeah. hopefully we can get rolling soon. I do understand. I mean, a lot of people were in that position with COVID. They're like, I have no idea how long I'm going to have these income streams. So if I do have some money in the bank, like the IRS can hold on for a few months. Like mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I have this to pay my bills. I get it. All right. So you know what you need to do, though, to get those back tax taken care of. You're going to get on an installment plan with the IRS, most likely. Cool. And you, I know you formed your LLC while you were in the course and did all your business license, licenses. How was that process for you? Yeah, it was really, um, it was easy. 
to do it. It was it was really nice to have to be able to do it with the group because we all did yeah. it together. So it, it wasn't um, overwhelming. And then for me, my business name is Body Trust Nutrition. So the word trust got flagged as like a financial something. Oh, yeah. So it, it took a little bit longer. It took me like a month and a half because we were in full lockdown. So I, I had to like send an appeal to the state office to talk about what my business was that it wasn't anything to do with a trust. Yeah, that makes sense. Because so that was a little, yeah, that had a little snafu. So that was, it took me a little longer to get everything done. So and then I was slower getting my bank account set up and all of that. Yeah, that was a, that was a weird time as well, because there's a lot, like a, lot of, a lot of these government offices were not set up to work remotely at that point in time. So some of them were just like shut down. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you as well, because we have a lot of, now at this point in the course, in the program, I would say that about half of our students are from California and about half of them are not from California. It's like skewing more and more national each time I launch. But every time I have at least a few people who ask me, Brayden, you're based in California. Like, will this be useful for me if I'm not in California? So can you talk to us about like, what was the process for you like being in Hawaii? And obviously I'm not providing you with like the step-by-step -step directions on how to do everything in Hawaii. Yeah, so it um, yeah, it was pretty seamless because I know that if like I could ask you questions, the only um, yeah, I think Brayden, when you instruct how to do things, like when we were filing our LLCs, you're like, you should see this screen next, and then everyone's yeah. like, is this this is what mine's like, that's what mine is. So having I think having the comfort of doing it, you're like literally holding our hands while we're doing it. So. Um, you would just say like, oh, because maybe the wording's a little bit different, but it's yeah. like still the same things that have to be filed. And then um, for me in Hawaii, I have to pay general excise tax. So that was like, it. I remember asking you, you're like, I'm not totally sure, but go look it up. So you just helped me know like how to find my answers. Which yeah, what, what we do is we, we try to create a checklist of all the things that you need to research, right? So like in most states, it's called this thing, but check and see if your state calls it that. And if they call it something else, let's make sure you're looking at the right thing. And then on this show, like I've never heard of general general excise tax before. It's kind of like a sales tax, but it's why he's got their own funky thing. I recently yeah. asked my friend Amy about it on one of our podcasts because you submitted a question. And Amy was like, oh yeah, only Hawaii does that. Yeah. So <laughs> unless you're like a very, very niche tax specialist like Amy and sales and use tax, you would only really know that if you were in Hawaii. But in that case, what I try to do is I'll say, all right, well, go find, go find where you think the answer lies on the state website. And if you have follow-up questions, bring it to the group and I'll help you interpret it because yeah. sometimes it's just parsing out the language for them. I know like, like New York state, I'm starting to learn a lot more about different states now because <laughs> in this past course, Wilma, who's a virtual assistant, she was in the state of New York and they had like a couple of funky requirements that we had to dig into. And same thing with like one of my students in Ohio. And of course, Hawaii. Hawaii is like all out there floating in the ocean by itself. They got their own stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, yeah, we do. We're really part of the um, Pacific region. Like we're yeah. like, we're part of Polynesia. So mm -hmm. we do things differently for sure. But, uh, but it wasn't, yeah, I wouldn't, um, I don't think it took anything away from my experience not being in California because like you said, you know the checklist of what we need and you're resourceful. So you'll help figure it out. Yeah. So it wasn't like, yeah, that's, before. that's the tricky part. And this is something I've tried to learn, like learn from some of my mentors, like people who teach course creators, how to create courses. They'll tell you there's like, there's, you have to balance a fine line, right? Cause on one hand you want to be super, super helpful. But on the other hand, you need to empower your students to be able to do their own research and due diligence because, you know, once they leave your live support, like they need to know where to go to find the answers, right? right? So sometimes it's a balancing act, but we do our best. All right. So you did all your LLC formation. Let's talk about cash flow. So it sounds like we still need to do your installment agreement, yeah. but your cash flow. How did that process go? Like, did you open all the bank accounts that we recommend in the course while you were in the program? I, um, I have my notes here to see. What am I actually <laughs> I pulled it out. I was like, what is my cash flow? So I have, because uh, I've been working on the personal one most yes. recently. So I have my, um, my income, business income, and then I use capital. 
for my tax mm-hmm. savings. And then, um, then I just have my business expense. I didn't okay. set up a salary one. Yeah, okay. I'm looking at the, the textbook. The chart. The, the, I don't the have five. Chart in the textbook. I just have two accounts and my capital. So how is the, is the tax savings like pretty seamless for you? It is. Yeah. It's I'm, so easy, right? It's so easy. And I, just because I was like anxious that I did my numbers wrong, I rounded up. So I'm actually saving more than I need. So I need to like rework it. I was like, I'm just going to do that to make sure. Yeah. Some people get really paranoid and they round up like a full 10 percentage points. And I'm like, I mean, you do whatever, yeah. <laughs> do whatever makes you comfortable. That, but I think once I get through this first year and like, you know, calm down a little, but well, you know, Jen, what could end up happening is if you save an extra 2 or 3%, you end up overpaying your quarterly taxes. Usually there's like a button you can click and you can apply your overpayment just towards your back taxes. Okay. Yeah. I figured it would, like if it's still allocated to taxes, I owe so much that it's like, it's okay. Yeah. yeah the IRS will be more than happy to take all of your money for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. So while we're talking about finances, you just went through the live round of Unfuck Your Finance. So that was like a special little promotion that I did last month. We did a three-week three course. And I don't really know what to ask you about that because it's not, it's not even really open to the public. I should have probably <laughs> talked about it. But it's something that our Unfuck Your Biz alumni students get access to in our membership. So the idea is you build on your business cash flow and then you iron out your personal cash flow and you create your milestones. So what are your, like, tell everyone like what your personal finance milestones are. Yeah, so um, my biggest one is my back taxes. Mm -hmm. I have a small amount of consumer debt, credit card to pay off, and then um, then student loans are my next milestone to pay. Yeah, those student loans will get you. And we talked, because we talked a lot about like doing an emergency savings fund as a milestone. Remind you, oh, yeah. didn't you say you already had that? I did. Yeah, I was able to do. I just had to like move some money over, and I was like, okay. And I keep looking at my bank account. I'm like, oh, there's that emergency. Yeah, <laughs> it feels nice. It feels nice, right? I think yeah. some people it did differs. It differs for everyone, but some people I think feel uncomfortable like having a pile of money saved when they owe someone else money. But then on the other hand, there are certain people who feel like they need a lot of money saved and they'll be more than happy to like not pay off their other debts in order to keep that nest egg. So we have to find a balance. Something that I did over the last three weeks uh, because I was focusing again is I went through my business expenses and I was able to, um, I got rid of one expense that, that I didn't need and I was able to pay for the year for a few I've acquired some expenses in the last year. <laughs> oh, now I'm using ConvertKit, and you know, I was like, "Oh, shucks!" Like now yeah, I all the course, all the course creator expenses. Yeah. Yeah. So that, and I, there were some that I didn't, um, I, like I wasn't ready to pay in full, like the whole year a year ago. So that was kind of cool to see that I had some money to be able to do that, and it was, I think it was like a savings of five hundred and fifty bucks for nice. the year. Yeah. So that was, yeah, that feels exciting. And then I um, did the same for some of my personal expenses. Like I realized that I could uh, have a lower phone bill. Like I just Mm -hmm. looked at my account. I was like, what am I paying for? I used way before COVID, I rented an office space a few days a week that didn't have Wi-Fi. Just so weird. Like I rented from a therapist who like only saw clients and then did all her stuff at home. So I was paying for a hotspot because that was like how I did my business. And so I realized I'm like, oh, I don't have to pay for my office and I don't have to pay for that. So my phone bill went down like 50 bucks or something. Oh, so wow. I'm kind of nice. looking to see like how I can, um, how do you say it in the book? Trim the fat. Yeah. Trim the, the fat, fat off your expenses. Okay. There's always, like there's always some random expenses, like especially on the phone bill. I feel like the phone bill, they just like add all these line items, like paying for stuff you have no idea about. I actually need to go. This is terrible. I've been paying. I have had a business phone for like two or three years now. I have not used it for a year and I'm still paying for it <laughs> just because I'm too lazy to go into T-Mobile. Um, yeah. It's like $20 a month. So it's actually like not that much, but still like literally the phone 
the phone that's connected to it has been dead, like has not been charged for eight months. <laughs> like I need to go cancel that. You, can just, you probably could do it online. Right? I you probably could. could. I probably could. But it's like that phone number is the primary phone number on the account. So I have to like change my personal oh, yeah, primary yeah. and then cancel that. It's on my to-do list. I'll do it next week. I need, yeah. to ha I need to have some of my students keep my me accountable on that one. <laughs> okay. So the last kind of step in the, in the program is systems. So we get into contracts and we get into bookkeeping and a few other things. So how's your, did you make any like tweaks to your, your bookkeeping systems? So I was using just Google Sheets and now I'm using Wave. Mm -hmm. which I really like. Do you like Wave? I do. Everyone says it's like super easy. Yeah, it's super easy. I like that it's free. Um, free is a bonus, yeah. I, I was like, it's not another expense, which was good. Um, yeah, that part, I, I, having a system makes it, I don't know that it's like fun looking at money stuff, <laughs> but it, it's like, gives me some peace of mind. Yeah. You know, like a couple times a month to sit down and look and see like what's happening, what, like, what needs to go where, and it's all happening I just feel like that piece because I was doing all you said this you had this in the um the book for the personal finances like all the mental gymnastics mm -hmm. I'm like okay what's coming to you what's the, like I was just doing all of that all the time so not having that it just like it's such a um like stress reducer yeah but sometimes I'm like uh, it's a lot of money going out but at least I'm like paying attention and so I don't feel worried about it. Yeah, because the, the mental gymnastics is like we're always looking at our bank account and then calculating like the money that we plan to have coming in over the next week and the money that we know that's coming out. And it's like a constant series of like math equations. It's too much. Yeah, And then it's like something total, like something that's like this annual expense you forgot about pops up and you're like, oh no, I didn't. Like now I'm stuck in the splits. What do I do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I relate to that. Obviously, I, I wrote it. This is, it came from yeah, yeah. a personal place. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so fun. And then you also, I'm assuming that you redid your client contract as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that was probably pretty simple for you, right? Because you... Yeah, yeah mine's it, pretty easy. Um, yeah, it's really simple. So I didn't have much... Um, before, okay, here's the true confessions. I was not always even like sending people the contract because I would get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> so you just so, take their money and get rolling? Well, when I switched from, um, you know, a few years ago, I was doing everything just through paper. So when I went to everything electronic, I had like a different form and then I switched my EMR service. So it was just was like, I hadn't, I wasn't always sending the contract. I was just having them like, yeah, like basically no contract. So my biggest takeaway is that I now um, make sure that every client signs the contract. <laughs> well, that's good. That's progress yeah. for sure. Yeah, and your clients probably love it. Their the clients love a contract. Yeah, yeah. I haven't had anybody. Um, yeah, it's no problem. It's just me remembering. It's, right. It's like, uh, I don't really love talking about that part with clients. So I actually need to make a video to talk about it, so I can just send that to them. So I, I just like use up all our session. I'm like, oh shit, I forgot about that. Yeah, you can do, like I tell people, you can do like a kind of a demo video on your contract, like basically explaining the contract and send that like with a Loom link or a Google Drive link when you send the contract and then they can watch it if they want to. Yeah, because I don't really like, I like, yeah. It's just yeah, you, could, you, could, you should just walk them through. I mean, what you definitely want to talk to them about is, like the pricing and the number of sessions they're getting, but you don't need to like spend your time talking about the rest of the contract. Okay. Yeah. I'm probably overthinking. So I just, yeah. So now everyone's, everyone has signed a contract. <laughs> Perfect. We love that. Okay, cool. So we're starting to wrap up here, Jen, if someone, so this is what I foresee happening potentially. I don't know. We'll wait and see. I'm going to, we're opening unfuck your biz in just about a week. So our first masterclass, I think, think is next week by the time this podcast releases. So everyone go to unfuckyourbiz.com, sign up for the masterclass. You're going to learn lots and lots of stuff for free. And then at the end of learning all that stuff, I'll invite you into unfuck your biz. You can join if you're interested. If not, no worries. You'll still learn a lot. But Jen, I imagine 
that after we do our launch, I will do a survey asking people why they didn't buy. And I'm predicting that the number one reason this time is going to be time. Because when I launched in the fall, a lot of people said money because they were really down clients because of COVID. And I think now they're going to say with vaccinations and things opening up, now I'm going to be super busy. Yeah. I think this is a problem. <laughs> people will say, I can't join because I don't have money because I have no clients. And then people will say, I can't join because I have too many clients and I don't have time. So if someone told you like, I don't feel like I have that much time to do this, what would you tell them? I would encourage them to prioritize it because if they're interested, it means that they are struggling. Like they need, like they're, they started their business and they didn't have all the support. And so even though it's, even if they're super busy, I'm thinking of the clients you have that are like all the wedding people, you know, like it's wedding season, all, mm -hmm. all that stuff that gets so busy in the spring. Um, if they didn't do it, like nothing will change for their finances. And it's, it's one of those things like that dark thing in the back of the closet. You're like, I don't want to look at it, but every time I look at the closet, I know it's back there and I'm stressed, I'm stressed out. So just wow. like, prioritizing it because it's not going to go away. And Brayden, you make it really fun. Like, it's not just like that you make it not painful. You actually make it fun. And then I'm like, ha 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 ha. I didn't file 2017. <laughs> like I can normalize that and be okay and not be like so worried. So I think just recognizing that it is, you are short on time, but it's, it's like the investment of prioritizing it will, um, the reward on the investment will be huge. Okay. And, and then it's done because you just hold our hands and walk, walk us through the whole thing. Yeah, and then you can like get a margarita and relax like the end yeah. of your peak season. You feel so at ease. Well, uh, that was- Especially, oh wait, one more thing. Yes. If this is a season where all the money is coming in. You want to know where it's going and how to like really have a good system for it. So even more so, if you're so busy, it's a good time to get those systems up. Yeah. So then you actually know what to do with that money once it gets into your bank account. Well, that was perfect. I like how, I, hopefully you enjoy how genius it is that I ask my students to give my sales pitch for me. <laughs> <laughs> Makes great testimonial copies. So thank you so much, Jen. Um, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. My final question for you is, I always give people a call to action at the end to join my free Facebook group, Braden's Besties. Today, additional call to action. Sign up for the free masterclass, unfuckyourbiz.com. It's going to be live. It's going to be awesome. I hope to see you there. But if my audience would also like to become one of Jen's besties and learn more about your business, where should they go to do that? Uh, yeah, you can go to my, uh, my Instagram. It's Body Trust Nutrition. That's probably the easiest. Because right. I don't have my freebie up on my website. Yeah, get your get your freebie up, get your lead magnet up, so you yeah, can get I don't have my lead subscribers. Meanwhile, though, yeah, we will drive traffic to your Instagram account. If you all want to connect with Jen, follow her on Instagram. We will, of course, have all these links in the show notes. As always, Jen, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Brayden.